camp, any injuries, long-term guys that won't be out there for the start of camp? Not that I'm aware of. Um, you know, we'll get back in as a staff uh, next week and, and, and get an update injury-wise. But obviously, uh, right at this point, everybody is good. And, and guys that were limited during spring practice are, um, are full speed ahead. Rocket Sanders and those guys have had a gr you know, great summer from a health standpoint. And, and uh, expect everybody to be full go once we, once we get going. Shane, if you had to give a theme to this uh, preseason preparation, what would it be? And what's going to be your top priority? going into camp? You know, theme-wise, I'd say going all the way back to January would just be the hunger, you know, that this team has. I mean, it's uh, we've got three fantastic leaders here today that have played a lot of football for us here at South Carolina, uh, along with a lot of other leaders. I mean, you think about it, two of the guys that we brought to media days last year are still on our team, and uh, Tonka and Kai as well. So we're, we're a older team that's very, very hungry. You know, they've shown that since uh, since August. And the theme for us, Rick, is just continue to, um, you know, build on that and embrace that. Got a lot of new faces, obviously, in, on all three phases, coaches and players, and continue to, you know, get acclimated and, and just get better. But really like this group, like the way they've worked since January. We've had a fantastic summer and, and uh, eager to get going. You mentioned these three young men being exceptional leaders, the guys who came last year still on the team. Why these three? Why was it their turn this year? Um, you know, last year, uh, going with Boogie, we brought Tonka, and I had a conversation with Boogie that, hey, I'm taking Tonka, but I'm going to take you next year. So I'm a man of my word um, <laughs> as well. But but in all seriousness, uh, you know, we've got a lot of leadership that are, that's returning. We vote on captains at the end of the season each year. We elect permanent captains, and Boogie Huntley and – and Debo were voted a permanent captain last year. They had five, the five highest votes on the team. Luke was not far behind and was very close, you know, to being that as well. So they're leaders for us. And to me, they just uh, embody everything that we want our program to be about. They embody everything to me that's right about college athletics. They've had opportunities to uh, finish their playing career or go somewhere else and transfer. And they They've uh, invested in South Carolina. You know, Luke and, and Boogie were here when I got here. And they've stayed, not just for 2021, but 21, 22, 23, and 24. And then Debo was one of the first young men that we brought in to Carolina when I was hired as the head coach when he transferred in from Delaware. So fantastic leaders, fantastic people. All three are graduates, you know, of South Carolina. And just uh, everything that's right about athletics, college athletics, college football, and uh, a, a testament to what our program's about. Shane, the NCAA recently passed a rule that analysts can now offer mm -hmm. on-field coaching instruction. Yeah. Are you in favor of that? Or yeah. you maybe kind of like everybody to stay in their lane? No, or? absolutely I am. Um, you know, every school is going to be different. I think you may have some coaches that, that you know, just hire an army of analysts. And you've seen that. Some coaches just in the last, you know, two or three months that have left uh, some coordinator jobs at the FCS level to go be an analyst somewhere else um, and, you know, more power to them. But I think it's great. It um, takes kind of the gray area out of who's allowed to do what. We try and do things the right way at our place, David, but not everybody, I don't think, is always going to – has followed that rule, you know, the way it's supposed to be followed. You know, we don't have to get really big. We're not. Um, and, and in my mind, it was some of the hires that we have. Mike Shula, for example, were, was done, you know, regardless of whether that rule had passed. Mike was a guy that we wanted to get in our program. But for him now to be able to actively coach on the field, it, uh, I was in favor of it. I think every coach I know in the SEC was in favor of it and something that will be really, really good for uh, coaches and their development, but also for the players on our team and, and their development.